Bienvenidos al Medical Spanish Podcast. Soy la doctora Molly Martin. Through this podcast, we provide interactive audio lessons for learning practical Spanish for healthcare and elsewhere. The level of this lesson is intermediate, and timestamps are provided in your show notes. The lessons offered at DocMolly.com are solely for learning Spanish. They are not intended to teach medicine, provide medical advice, or take the place of a certified medical interpreter. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we're bringing back a popular lesson from the archives, where Angel and I recorded a dialogue between a patient and a clinic receptionist over the phone. Since the last episode covered greeting patients for lab tests, I thought this would be a perfect follow-up. I've also added some commentary about names in Latin America, which I think you'll find helpful. I have received a lot of emails requesting that I cover telephone Spanish and calls to the clinic. So Angel and I created a phone dialogue where a patient calls the clinic, speaks with the receptionist, is transferred to his doctor's nurse where he leaves a message, and finally the nurse returns his call and they discuss his concern. In this lesson, you will hear the first part of that dialogue, where the receptionist identifies him in their system, asking the spelling of his last name, his date of birth, his address, and his telephone number. After the dialogue, we will review the key vocabulary. This lesson is part of our Spanish for Primary Care course. If you'd like to access all our interactive lessons where we review vocabulary and grammar and practice interpreting key lines from the clinical dialogues, be sure to become a member at docmolly.com. And now sit back and enjoy the dialogue. Buenos dias. Habla la clínica de St. Mary's. Soy Molly. ¿Cómo le puedo ayudar? Tengo un problema y necesito ver a la doctora Anderson. ¿Cómo no? ¿Cuál es su nombre? Me llamo Daniel Ortiz. Daniel Ortiz. ¿Podría deletrear su apellido, por favor? O-R-T-I-Z. Gracias. Okay, I'm going to interrupt this dialogue to explain something about names in Latin America. In Latin America, most people have two first names, similar to our first and middle name, and two surnames. The first surname usually comes from their father and the second from their mother. When a woman marries, she typically replaces her maternal surname with her husband's paternal surname. In other words, she replaces her second maternal surname with her husband's first paternal surname. So her two surnames become her paternal surname and her husband's paternal surname. In casual settings, it's common for Latinos to introduce themselves using one of their names. It can be either their first or second name, whichever they prefer, and their paternal surname. However, in more formal contexts, like in a clinic, they may provide all four names. For example, their first name, their second name, their first surname, which is their paternal surname, and their second surname, which may be their husband's surname or their mother's surname. Finally, the child often takes the paternal surname from the father and the paternal surname from the mother. However, rules are changing and in Mexico, the woman's paternal surname sometimes comes first rather than the father's paternal surname. Now let me give you an example just to help explain this further. My teacher's name who explained all this to me is Daniela Grave. That's how she introduces herself. But Daniela is actually her second name. It's the one she prefers. So that's how she introduces herself, Daniela. Her first name is Ana, Ana Daniela. Then she uses her paternal surname, Grave. However, when presenting her name for official documentation, such as in a clinic or the airport, she would likely use all four names, Ana Daniela Grave Aragón. So Ana is her first name, Daniela is her second name, Grave is, is her surname from her father's side, and Aragón 
is her surname from her mother's side. When she introduces herself in casual setting, she says, Soy Daniela Grave. But if she were going to present to the clinic, she would say, Soy Ana Daniela Grave Aragón. Finally, if you want both someone's first name and their surname, it may be best to ask, ¿Cuál es su nombre completo? And if they give you more than two names, you'll know that the last two are probably their two surnames. If it's a woman, the first one's from her father, the second one may be from her husband. Or, for everyone else, the first one is likely from their father and the second one is from their mother. Ahora, volvamos al diálogo. ¿Y cuál es su fecha de nacimiento? El 5 de mayo de 1970. Aquí lo veo. Muy bien. Y me gustaría confirmar su dirección. Tenemos 1300 Third Street Southwest en Minneapolis con el código postal 55418. ¿Es correcto? No es correcto. Me he mudado a 1459 Hennepin Avenue. ¿El 1459 Hennepin Avenue? Así es. ¿Y cuál es el código postal? Es 55419. ¿55419? Correcto. And note, to ask for someone's address, you can use... ¿Cuál es su dirección o cuál es su domicilio? ¿Y cuál es el mejor número de teléfono para comunicarnos con usted? Es mejor llamarme a mi móvil. El número es 608-555-0183. Otra vez, por favor, y más despacio. 6 cero ocho cinco 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 cero uno ocho tres. Muy bien. Por favor, espere un momento. Voy a intentar pasarle a la enfermera de la doctora Anderson. Lo siento. Pero la extensión de la enfermera de la doctora Anderson está ocupada. ¿Quisiera dejar un recado en su bosón de voz? Ella le regresará su llamada dentro de poco tiempo. Sí, está bien. Le pasaré a su bosón de voz para que usted deje un recado. Gracias. No hay de qué. Que tenga un buen día. Now let's review the key vocabulary. To spell. Deletrear. Last name. El apellido. Date of birth. La fecha de nacimiento. Address. La dirección. You may also hear el domicilio to refer to home address. To move, as in to move to another address. Mudarse. Phone number. El número de teléfono to contact someone comunicarse con alguien cell phone el móvil extension La extensión. I'm transferring you to her extension. La 
Le paso a su extensión. The line is busy. La niña está ocupada. Message. El recado or el mensaje. Voicemail or voice mailbox. El buzón de voz. Call. La llamada. To return the call or to call back. Regresar la llamada. Bien hecho. Espero que te haya sido de utilidad esta lección. In the interactive premium lessons, we review the key vocabulary and grammar as we practice interpreting the clinical encounter line by line. To learn more, become a member at docmolly.com. Hasta la próxima! This is a production of docmolly.com, where we learn practical Spanish for healthcare and elsewhere.